Hey everyone, today I'll be talking about how we won Springfest uh, 2023 in Sydney for Standard. I'm gonna kind of talk about the decks we took, why we took them, uh, the, the seating placement, right, the theory, and then basically how we went on the day and, you know, just, just overall stuff about the tournament. So let's kind of get started, right? So I'm not going to go too deep into the deck profiles, to be honest, because if you've been playing Standard for a while now, you kind of know how these decks are built, and these are in set 9 format, because set 10 only just got released, so we cannot play them. So this is my Overlord deck that I took. I don't think there'll be much changes when it comes to set 10. I think I just, you might add in a Cycler somewhere. I've pretty much just been playing this deck for a very, very long time now. I think I've been playing it, I, I've basically, I basically built this deck, and really haven't changed it, because it just pretty much works, right? I think just before the couple of days before the tournament, after testing the jet matchup more, I was thinking maybe do I take out a few like some Brachio Force? Because you know, just just like Brachio Force makes the matchup better, but at the same time, it's still not good anyway. And just add in some like model cards for like more defense. But in the end, I just went, look, it's it's been working fine, right? I'm not gonna win every single match. It's just how standard is. If it works, it works. Like keep it how it is. Brachio Force is a good card. So it just kind of stayed the same, right? I, I pretty much really did not change this deck at all because it's just, it just, it just worked and it worked very, very well for me. And look, the deck is pretty much just flip, flip yellows and hit OT at some points and you just auto win like a bunch of matchups, right? So uh, just very, very solid, very standard deck. The next one we have here is Ava. So this was piloted by Kelvin who went like 10-0, like he went crazy. I personally did not know, like, what he actually did with this deck at all, right? So, story is that before the tournament, Mark is supposed to play the Ava deck, because if you watch his results with Ava previously, I think it was, like, 23-0, 24-0 with the deck at major tournaments. So, you know, it, it's just everyone will be going, yeah, Mark is definitely playing Ava. But actually, Mark hates playing the new Ava list because it's not the same as the old one, so he doesn't like it, so he decided not to play it. Um, so he just gave it to Kelvin, and Kelvin's like, oh, I don't know. I hate testing, so he just like sat in his room for like, like three weeks, and then ended up going ten zeros. I don't know. All right, yeah. <laughs> uh, the deck is pretty standard. I I I look I looked at a couple of other lists though. People were not running like four combine rusher, and three bubble mines. Right, they were running things like wavy loss uh, and just other tech. This is just a very straightforward deck. When you have four combine rushers, you're just maxing it out. You always want to see it early. And uh, the way I, s even though I didn't see Kelvin like play this deck much, right? Especially since he was on the other side of the table. Uh, every time I did see him play, I like glance there and go, "Oh, how's Kelvin doing? Wow, he's his opponent's at four damage and like no cards in hand. I, it looks like he wins, right? It looks like he wins. So every time I see that, it just kind of, I just think he just probably rushed with it. Um, I know when you when you play Ava as well, you want to have two damage in your grade three turn, but I think he just doesn't care. And because you run three bubble mines anyway, it's quite a good chance that you'll have a bubble mine that so you don't really need to worry about getting damage denied and all that. So just just push and kill your opponent, right? And then the last deck we have is definitely the Jet. This was piloted by Mark, and uh, this is pretty much I, I feel like it's a pretty standard Jet list. The only thing that's not here is Steam Breath Dragon. Um, we just found the card pretty pretty bad, right? Okay, it's Stride Fodder, it can search a Chrono Jet. But why don't you just like draw your Chrono Jets? Because you draw so much anyway, and then run a bunch of like better grade ones. Sure, you can replace some of your Chrono Jets with grade like the Steam Breath, and that has like extra 5k shield, and you can play it down earlier. But it's a very low value card, right? It's just very, very low value. And like a 5k shield or two 5k shields is just like whatever, right? At some point, you might as well just, like, sure, the Jet Mirror, you know, winning winning the winning the Grade 2 game is important. And maybe that Steam Breath might help you, like, 1 in 50 games, because you can play down another 8k. But at that point, like, you can just cut your losses and not play the Grade 2 game. And just go straight up to 3 and, like, okay, you, like, playing Grade 2 game is similar to, like, old school play Grade 2 game in G. You just have to, you have to know when you can't play it. And if you can't play it... You just don't play it. You just cut your losses immediately. Don't play it. And uh, look, it's not like you can't survive a second strat of jet. It's happened. It happens before. You just have to have the right pieces and a bit of luck. So just go straight to the stride game. 
and you know survive their second turn and you go into your second turn and maybe you win right so or just go into the next stage and then just luck sack so it's not like it's a, it's a lost cause i think so we, in this deck zero zero steam breaths it opens up space to things like sargon gungaram you know everything everything that is important and uh yeah this is pretty good and that's basically what we took so funny story is like we were thinking of cutting ava before the tournament because I, I think previously i've always been on overlord right and then you know we're just wondering who plays jet kelvin can play jet and mark can play ava right because that's kind of kind of kind of how you know people like we, we expected it although i did tell kelvin to play ava in japan just to you know let him know some cards there so it kind of helps him with his bcs experience here even though he doesn't have a biddable zone uh which is really annoying but you know in the end mark was like hey you know i can't play ava that is effective where you know you have to be very very aggressive um let's give it to kelvin who can play it way more uh way more of a i, I don't know it's just just it's way more aggressive, I guess, to put it in co correct turns. And that kind of worked out very well. But yeah, we were thinking of cutting Ava um, because, you know, it's it just has a really bad, you know, jet matchup it, against, against, like, Overlord. It's also, like, not a confirmed win. It's actually very, very close when, it, when you think about it. It has, like, a good matchup against Wellstraw, um, but it's also not, like, super favored. Uh, the thing is that Ava does kind of beat everything else. It's also very, very consistent. But then when decks kind of high roll uh, and you face a jet, it's just not very good. Right? That's It's it, it's just stable, right? It's stable. But in the end, we kept Ava, and I think it's the correct choice because there's a difference between, like, testing amongst ourselves uh, versus testing against other people. If we do test against, like, not us, I feel like Ava would just feel really, really godlike and... Uh, you know, it's an auto-include. Uh, so yeah, we were thinking of cutting an Ava for a Wellstra or, you know, me playing Wellstra instead of Overlord. Um, but in the end, personally as well, I liked Overlord more than Wellstra because I, I don't know, I just, I just like triggering crits. But that's just how it is. Also, like, even though Wellstra has, like, a good, good, like, jet matchup, it's, like, against the general populace, I feel like you'll have those dead hands where either you don't draw a Fry Height and or your hand is just full of like orders and stuff and you just lose to random stuff so in that case overlord is just better because if they don't damage deny you you get a bar search that will search for a key piece that you need and if they do damage deny you well they just pass on a turn right so that's fine with me so yeah in the end the lineup was just the the good old tried and tested overlord jet and uh and ava ava lineup yeah uh, moving on, uh, well, here is like the matchup spreadsheet, right? This is kind of what we thought, like, ha how we thought about the format. So, you know, Overlord versus Jet is unfavored, right? Basically, everything against Jet is pretty bad. Like, just, just be honest. It's just not very good. You can have weird decks which rush your opponent. Um, oh, well, Welster is actually good against Jet, so that's 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 the, the only thing but yeah it, basically a lot of things are unfavored against jet so overload has that problem uh you do see here what is an okay and what is favored so against like ava it's it's okay right overlord is is okay against what does that mean well you know if you get your pieces and hyrule just slightly a bit you know your matchup is good otherwise it's like not 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 good right so it, an, an okay means that it can be good, but it can be not, right? Generally, it's okay. It's not like just you have the you have the advantage, yeah. Uh, you don't you never want mirrors in this format, right? Overlord versus overall Overlord is pretty undesirable because you just you know it's all about flipping triggers. Why I don't rate anything as like favored with Overlord is simply because it's it's kind of trigger reliant, you know. If you don't hit triggers, it's you still can have a decent game if like the deck if your deck you're facing is just like really bad. But, like, to be fair, like, if you don't hit triggers against Wallstra, you know, they will kind of high roll and kill you. If you do hit triggers against Wallstra, they're just dead, right? They're just annihilated. And then against the rest of the decks, I put them as okay as well, just because, again, you know, triggers will just blow them out of the water. It'll snowball really heavily. But when they don't, when you don't get them, um, it's just kind of, you just don't feel like you have that control versus when, you when you're playing, like, a Jet or an Ava, where you're, like, that consistent. Your things have crit, your damage and I can do all this stuff, you know, multi, yeah. That, that's basically it, right? So that was kind of my, my thoughts on the spread. 
Uh, when you're jet, right? When you're jet, basically everything is good except for the mirror where you where you don't want to face the mirror at all. And then against Wallstruck, which is actually just not a great matchup for you. They multi-attack you, they retire you. It just feels very, very bad. But you're basically favored against everything else. And then with Ava, right, it's unfavored against Jed. You don't really want to play against an Overlord because, you know, when they high roll you, like, you lose. And you're supposed to be a consistent deck that can, like, you know, have staying power. You're aligned, like, your team relies on you to win. So it's very undesirable for you to face an Overlord. Um, but facing everything else, I think, is pretty much fine. Uh, generally, it's undesirable to play the Ava Mira, but, you know, for Kelvin, he doesn't care. So that's a big plus in our book. He can just play the Ever Mirror and not feel bad. So yeah, that, that's basically what this matchup spread is. Uh, and then you, we have a bit of some points here. So you don't want any mirror happen, mirrors to happen, but Kelvin doesn't care as much because he just doesn't care. I said that before. Uh, you don't want to put Ava versus Jet or Overlord. So this is how we, we basically went through our seating arrangements. Uh, you also don't want to put Jet versus a Wellstra. So okay, that's but that, that's the only thing you have to worry about. Um, Overlord has like an unfavored matchup versus Jet, but it's actually not unwinnable and has an okay matchup against everything else pretty much. Yeah, because once Overlord like snowballs a bit, hits some triggers, it's actually just like not unwinnable, right? It's actually not unwinnable. Um, and then yeah, again, Overlord doesn't have a favored matchup, but it's only bad matchup is Jed. And then Ava generally has weaker matchup against the top decks, right? So I think the, I think we say that the only good matchup it has is probably against a Wellstra. And that's only slightly favored, in my opinion, right? They can't retire your front row, but they still do some decent amount of multi-attacks. You just get the extra shield, which makes it slightly favored, to my opinion. But it is the most consistent deck and will beat every other deck. And you won't have, like, issues where you go, I need to grade two game in the Jet Mirror. Um, and that kind of comes down to a bit, bit of luck, right? Of course, you know, for the Ava Mirror, you do want to top five and hit the... Uh, the obstacle that that r r like wrecks the front row but it's it's against you know every other janky deck you see it will be fine and then you don't want to waste the jet uh in mirrors because it can beat every deck right so if you put a jet and it faces a jet you're wasting a jet why because jet can basically beat everything that is not a wellstra so you never want that to happen so when you think about that right then um, you also have to think about other things, right? The Ava player might be the strongest when we think about opposing teams, right? The Ava player might be the strongest on their team because Ava is technically a harder deck to play uh, compared to Jet, right? I don't think you'd put the best player or uh, I don't think a lot of teams would put the best player on the Jet because it's an easy deck to play uh, and you have other harder decks that you want, you know, the better plays to be on to maximize their effectiveness, right? And I think like a lot of players are, like other teams are also thinking Mark was like the the Ava player simply because he does have a history with Ava, but it's also, again, like considered one of the harder decks to play versus everything else in the team. So uh, you, you probably be thinking the best player will be on the Ava, right? The other thing is like weak, weak, weak jets will just lose regardless of where they sit. Like if they're a bad players on jet, you know, unless they get hyper lucky, I think they're pretty much dead. Um, and then where do the strong players sit? Well, strong players will either sit in the middle or farm the side lanes. Right. One thing that is different about this compared to a Sydney compared to a lot of the other tournaments, I think Indo allowed communication as well, is we do allow communication. So you can talk with your teammates and help them. Um, so sitting in the middle is important because you can talk to both players very effectively. Uh, while if you're sitting on a side, you can only talk to the person to your that is adjacent to you very effectively, right? So if I'm sitting in player A, it's gonna be very hard for me to talk to player C. Alright. Because you actually can't stand up and leave leave your chair, so it's gonna be hard for for us. Uh, so that that's where you'd have like the strong players will sit in the middle and talk to both players if they need help, or then you know you'd put a strong player on a side lane and then just like farm farm that lane and then talk to the uh, put maybe put the middle player as like the the weaker player so you can kind of talk to him, right? Um, and that's why that, that's why I say like you know strong jets will, will likely either sit on the sides or the weaker jet might sit in the middle because again jet if you think of a jet deck it's a it can be a very kind of solo deck where you just sit there and like farm wins right so either sitting on the sides like the, the stronger player with a jet is sitting on the side but then if like you give the weaker player jet you put them in the middle and then tell people like other people will just help him right like what do you stride oh you stride to next stage and all that uh, and then when you evaluate sides it is more likely that the player c will have most of the weaker slash janky decks and that's pretty much just 
just player like i think this is just human how do, how do you say it? it's not intuition like just you know tendencies right you see abc right a is for doctor b is for soon to be doctor and c is just average you know uh you never want to be a you never want your report card to be a c right um but just just generally as well people associate abc one two three um and you'd put like I get, I, and when you look at just all the data, it's like C as well. Just, just feels like it's it's the weaker player. This is it, it's this is like just just feeling. Right? It's just feeling, you know. Um, and then and then you know you want to put Overlord against the meta deck and flip good triggers, right? Because Overlord technically, even though we list here, Overlord has a fav unfavored matchup against Jet, right? If you just flip triggers with Overlord, you can still win games, right? And then. As an like like good players, even though they're good, they they still can't do much if you keep on flipping triggers. That's just how it is, right? So they can if you can put the Overlord deck against their best player, it doesn't matter how good they are, they can still lose. And I mean that's Vanguard, they can still lose, but more so against an Overlord deck because triggers and maths, right? So that's kind of how we evaluate where we want to sit. So Ava needs to be on C. Right, because we evaluated that, hey, you know, there's a bunch of weaker decks on C, and Ava is good against everything else that is not meta decks. Put Ava on C and farm the crap out of that lane, right? Uh, Overlord needs like zero help and as a solo deck so it can go on A and B. Like, what is a ha, like, what help are you getting as an Overlord player, right? Uh, if, if the Overlord player is sitting to my side, I'm, what am I telling him? Flip triggers. That's pretty much the help I'm telling him. Like, where do, where do you put the crit trigger? You just do all to Vanguard, right? All to Vanguard. So, so, Overlord basically needs zero help, right? Zero help. So let's put it on a... You can just put it on a side lane. Um, so it, it, it's, you, you don't need to talk much with him. You can go to A or B pretty much because we've already confirmed that Ava is on C. Uh, Chrono Jet does need to dodge the other jets, but it's likely the better jets will be on A. So you put it on B and that means Overlord has to go on A, right? Which makes sense, because Overlord is just a solo deck, needs zero help, you want to farm against good, the good players. A it is, B is Jet, C is Ava. Uh, and yeah, that's basically how we decide our team team, team seedings, right? Um, doesn't always happen like that, because, you know, the f formats are always different. Formats are always different, like, uh, different formats have different good decks. Uh, different decks have, like, you know, different amounts of good decks. Uh, different players need to be, like, the carry uh, kind of thing. Like, like, for example, way back in our first Spring Fest we won, there was, like, only one really, really good deck at the time, and that was Chaos, and that was me, so I had to carry. Was, I think that was the only time I was, like, the carry, you know, of the team, but, like, you know, zero help needed, put on A, and the other two players just, you know, farm a win on B and C, right? So there's always different ideas when it comes to seating placements. I'm sure there's also a different idea when you're playing different formats. So in V, you'd, you'd find different ways to sit. Uh, C, you're also going to find different ways to sit. There's also like different logics, right? And, and the meta gaming. So once you decide on like, once you decide on like A, B, and C, like how we're sitting, then you know other players will be going. But the good players will be thinking about it this way. And if I only care about the good players, then I need to counter the good players and read the meta like that. And it just goes like different layers of like reading or. But yeah, that's basically how we sat. That's basically how we sat. We just went screw it. That, that's how it is, right? Don't worry about the other guys. Let's just do it our way. And then I think these were the results. These were pretty much the results. Um, here you can see we, we basically went undefeated. It was un we went 10-0. 10-0 the entire day. Uh, you can see Kelvin here. He had a great run. 10-0 as well. He 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 he, uh, he did very very well. All right. We can't we can't talk badly about them anymore. And you can see that actually our player sheeting was very very kind of good. Right. In terms of the amount of Ava mirrors that Kelvin faced. Uh, he faced the least amount of Ava mirrors in player C, and then he also faced one Chrono Jet at the end of the day, which he just sacked. Right? He, I think he flipped an OT and just killed him. So overall, like putting Kelvin on player C was a very, very good strategy. He basically farmed everyone, and it was very, very good times. Uh, player B as Mark, he had some good matchups too. Look at this Ava, Ava, Ava. I think that's very, very great. Uh, Youthberg is also a good matchup. Uh, lost to Ava here, which is. Unfortunately, I think he just just didn't have anything. It happens. It is the game, and only faced one Wellstra as well. So one bad matchup for him, and he lost that, which is you know kind of expected. But it's okay. We won our other two games, um, and also managed to beat all the Jets. So that turned out well too. Maybe they 
It's not like they were bad players, but you know, it's it's a jet mirror. Um, if he sat on A as well, he would have had faced all the jets too, right? And then for me, I think I, I had a, bit, a pretty good run. I only faced, well, I faced three jets, so it's not bad, but managed to be two of them. So that was really, really good. And uh, one of them was very, very important where I had to win this one. I also had to win the Overlord as well. Um, but that was fine, right? Kind of two undesirable matchups there, but all good. The games that I did lose, so I can kind of just go through the whole day. The first day, I, the first game playing against Minerva. Um, so these Minerva players are like really, really good because all they do in the ride line is they soul charge two camera miles. I'm like, whoa. But here I just kind of flip triggers and win. Um, against the Overlord, the Overlord match was really, really, was actually really good. The Overlord mirror was like, you know, uh, really came down to the wire, right? Really came down to the wire. Uh, and then the third Minerva, I kind of, I lost. So Minerva has just, Minerva is like an Overlord deck. And uh, like, I, I guess I kind of explained this, right? It's like, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of have, if we go back here, let's put it, let's talk about the rest, right? What, what is the rest? All right. So vanguard comes down to a couple of things right now is that you know you have the restanding vanguards you have stride decks and all that and you can kind of lump all the restanding vanguards together in um in just one category as restanding vanguards and for us we pick the best restanding vanguard deck out of all of them um in my opinion right like sure there is Letitia. Uh, sure, there is Minerva, but I personally think Overlord is just better. However, it's not like they're bad decks, right? One thing I disliked about Minerva is that its ride line didn't really plus you, but then it technically does have a higher high roll when it comes to its, you know the restanding turns. So that's the scary part. Now, this Minerva I faced in round three had a great grade three turn. Uh, he just he, he got he got some good triggers, did heaps of multi attacks. My hand became doo doo right it became trash and then the turn after he triggered uh vanilla ot so i just can't guard that i just lose but you just gotta accept that you just lose right um so that was my loss there chrono jet was uh chrono jet managed to win this chrono jet it was very good uh and then i played the ava on stream ava player was very good i didn't see like i don't i think it's like maybe one or zero persona rise that game and if you don't Persona ride against Ava, you will just you don't put enough enough pressure and you lose. I also didn't manage to make three lines, right? So I had to, I could only do three attacks a turn. I just didn't have any attackers, and I didn't have a persona ride to make my bad cards into attackers. So it just zero pressure against Ava. They just won through that very very simply. So I pretty much lost that. Um, but my other teammates won, so I was good. Uh, and then I played another Ava, Ava, and this was a way easier game because I did see everything I needed, so I just won won that one. I see also over trigger as well, so easy game. And then against Chrono Jet, um, I also won. So this was against Iton's team, and uh, yeah, against I, I, my, I, like my I, I think I went I went second against a Chrono Jet, but by the time he destroyed, I think I had like one or zero cards, so. <laughs> when that happens, you're pretty much done. So that's pretty much me triggering good. Yeah, good times. My, my grade three turn, do the overlord stuff, trigger, trigger, hand disappears. Um, and then in top eight, I faced another Minerva. Uh, this Minerva didn't soul charge to Kamama. I think it, I, I think they had to soul charge a, a draw trigger at some point. So that was actually good for me. Uh, and then I got good triggers. So I won. And um, yeah, this one was also on stream. So you can check it out. I lost this... In top four, I had to. We played played against Ayton's team again, um, and this time I lost, right? Because guess what happened? I think on the second turn, uh, the Chrono Jet triggered OT, and then Dark Shades on T on the second turn means I have to guard way way more cards in my hand with way more cards. I did come down to the wire at the end, but it's just the the number of turns where I had to guard extra just to be able to guard the Vanguard. Basically, lost all my cards, so I couldn't I couldn't do anything about it. Right, everything that should have been 41k uh, attacks became 51k. And that just means way more. You can't even want to pass with like two cards. So yeah, it's it's pretty rough there. So I lost that one, but thankfully, you know, Jet versus Ava is a win. You know, uh, and then you know, Ava versus Youthberg generally is a win too. So again, seeding seeding kind of was very very good for me. All right, very very good for me or us us. And then lastly, we played against Ava, Youthberg, and Jet. Uh, I, know, I know Kelvin just just sacked the jet, 
right? I think he triggered OT, so it's a great time to trigger OT in your bad matchup in the finals. And then for me, I played against uh, Lamb, who was a pretty, very, very good player. Right, he's been playing game for a very, very long time. I actually do like his Ava build quite a bit. He was running like Dragon Tree stuff, played very, very aggressively. This was on stream too. I got streamed like heaps of times that day. Uh, but the game was very, very good. I always, at the beginning of the game though, I did feel like I was a bit favored because his hand size wasn't great. But until the, but at the end of the game, right, I was like, man, the OT is still in this deck. So, uh, you know, if he triggers it or six damage OTs, I basically lose. That was also the the one game where the OT was in my opening hand. So I couldn't even, well, I, I could guard with it, but I could never trigger it. So I couldn't just blow out the game like that. But yeah, it just really, it, it, I think it just really comes down to if he sees his OT anywhere, right? I think I lose, um, but it didn't happen, thankfully. It was just stay in the deck and it never came out. So that was it. We were able to win, right, the, the entire tournament. Uh, here's a picture of our victory. If you don't know, this this kind of pose, this pose is what we did way back in like uh, in 2016 when we won our first Spring Fest. And then you can see you can see the fist the fist bump. Well, not, the, not the fist bump, the fist pump, right? So the, yeah, we try to we try to redo this pose again, but we're too old now. And uh, we look, we just we just we're just old. We can't. We don't have the energy to do a good fist bump. Except Kelvin. Kelvin went 10-0, and he's very happy, and he's ready to just. Just, just destroy everyone. Overall, the day the day went very, very well, right? Um, funnily enough, right, we reached cap for this Spring Fest. It was actually crazy. Uh, and there were still teams, I think, that couldn't make it in. But we were the we were the second last team to be able to join the tournament. Uh, so we were team 80. There was 81 teams. This is a huge increase from, like, last week. I think this is a 100% increase from last week's Spring Fest. We pretty much... Uh, doubled the teams, I think. I think. Uh, I think when it comes to BCS as well last year, we had like 120 to 150. I don't know the exact numbers, but you know, if you do the maths, this was 243 players joining the tournament. So it was the biggest that Sydney has, it, or Australia has ever gotten. And I think there were still like 10 teams or so that couldn't join. So that was like 30 more. 200. The turnout was incredible, right? Actually incredible. So very, very cool to see everyone just enjoying Vanguard and playing, especially for Standard. Uh, and I hope uh, it just continues to improve, right? I just think, you know, they, they're doing something right, right? Even though people complain about stuff, right? It could be PRs, it could be Lord. Something is still right that keeps people from for, that keeps people interested in playing the game. And I uh, just hope they continue doing that. It's also that also, I think just a lot of the communities in in Australia have just really improved. They've been like getting like big, big, you know, events going on or just getting a lot of community involvement. So that's also good to see. But yeah, it's just good to see Vanguard doing so well, at least in Australia and just everyone supporting the game. Um, I think that's it. I, I don't really have much more to say. You know, it's uh, it, it was it was pretty unreal. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think I didn't, I think a lot of us didn't think would win standard because going into the tournament, we're like, look, prepare your v decks right if we go zero two we're playing v uh and that was uh, we had them prepared we had them prepared but hey we went undefeated so instead of a zero two we went like x zero which is which is great right ten zero which is kind of like a two zero if you know binary um big shout outs to like my teammates you know mark and kelvin we've been doing this for a long time uh, it's just it's always hard getting wins, but when you get the win always still thankful and I mean we <laughs> Got an Ava mat got an Ava prize card Feels feels all right big shout outs to like the uh, the WCC uh, Guys as well, you know, they've always been great doing Great memes great support and you know Derek Derek uh, Derek Toby also did well with with Gabriel right WCC X Caesar cards for V they also won on the same day, so uh, yeah, that, that's that's great. That's great. All right together to the top. Yeah. Yeah um, And with that, I just want to say thank you all for watching. Hope this does give you some insight on how team tournaments work for us uh, and uh, yeah See you all next time. All right. Bye